Lebanon's filmmakers have outdone themselves in the past year, with Nadine Labaki's latest movie, Kafarnaum, receiving the jury prize at the 2018 Cannes Film Festival and a 15-minute standing ovation. The success of directors transcending borders to reach the international stage speaks volumes of Lebanese talent. Lebaki has made it her mission to challenge the pre-established system throughout her movies. In 2007, she released her first feature film titled Caramel, where she showcased women's everyday struggles in finding their identity in a patriarchal Middle Eastern society. <laughs> With her 2011 movie, Where Do We Go Now?, she tackled religious strife in the most satirical of ways. Her latest production, Kafarnaum, about a poor 12-year-old boy named Zayn, who sues his parents for giving him birth, is by far the most serious, the timeliest, and the most poignant. We met with Nadine Labaki to talk about the sensitive subjects of illegal immigrants, child labor, and abuse, and of course, what it all means for this nation. I want to talk about this movie. You know, the subject matters could not be more relevant today. Illegal immigrants, workers without papers, children without schools growing up in slums, forced into labor, child brides, a dysfunctional system. All of these subjects featured at the same time in a two-hour movie where we almost can't catch a breath. Was it intentional to have it become overwhelming for the viewer? Yes, in, intentional in the sense that you, we need to really understand the enormity of the problem and the enormity of this injustice that is not only towards kids or but, but towards a whole community of people that ends up being completely excluded from the system because the system cannot find any solutions so completely on the margins of our lives of our societies on the margins of our systems and and they end up completely invisible. So they they're, they're even exist. non-existent. They almost don't they're, exist. They, they right. don't exist because they don't even have a paper that proves their existence. So it was, for me, important to, yes, for you to be overwhelmed by all that because this is the reality, and the reality is even more overwhelming than what you see. Is even more ugly than what you see in the film. You know, sometimes you can't really show everything. You can't Because I know you researched this. You took the yes. time to research yes. this and you said you were taken aback with what you saw. Uh, yes, we spent, uh, my co-writers and I, we spent, you know, the past four years mm. researching, going to very unfortunate, you know, neighborhoods and places in Lebanon, going to detention centers, rehabilitation centers, mm. going to prisons for minors, spending time in courts. I used to watch courts for just hours and hours, just going there, just watching, uh, and to really understand what's, what's wrong with the system, what's wrong with the whole structure. Uh, Did you figure come? out what was wrong with the system? You can't really figure out. There's not one problem. Right. There's intricate problems, and it, it's all part of one big chaos, part of a big kafarnahum. That's it. When people say that this movie borders on miserabilism, even though you have stated that it is a raw depiction of reality, what do you respond? The people who are saying this, I guess they've never been there. I, I guess they've never seen this. Uh, they've used words and expressions like poverty porn, uh, miserabilism, uh, but unfortunately they I think they're not even aware that this is, this is the truth. They're not even aware that this is happening. Sometimes maybe the, the, the problem is so big, so big we don't want to look. It's like you feel so hopeless maybe, you feel so helpless with the enormity of the problem that you don't know where to begin. You feel too small to be able to make a change. You feel like you're never going to be able to make anything. So you, you, you decide to turn your back and you decide to just not look. But yeah, you continue just, I continue doing what I want to do and doing it from the heart and that, that's it. It's not going to please everyone. Even some Lebanese people are going to find it too much or too overwhelming. Or well, I want to talk about the Lebanese people because I know you've said that you use your profession as a weapon. I really like this. If only by helping people to become more aware of the situation around them. In this country, there's a bubble, the elite. They know what's going on. They maybe ignore it. And the gap between rich and poor keeps getting bigger and bigger especially between those who have and can and those who don't. Is there a message for that group that lives in the bubble in this movie? 
The message is that we need to wake up to reality. We need to wake up to get out of this bubble because it's it's very relaxing and it's very comforting to and comforting to live in that bubble and to say, okay, this is my world, and then be completely oblivious of what's happening around you. The message is we need to see, we need to acknowledge the problem. We are responsible for the problem somehow, each one of us in our own way. I feel responsible for it. That's why I made this movie, because I feel responsible in this chaos and this kafarnahum that's happening around me. I feel responsible for every kid I see on the street. I feel responsible for every uh, uh, migrant worker that is not receiving her rights. I feel my responsibility. And we're proud and we don't want to admit that we have our flaws. It's like exactly like, uh, you know, like the buildings that, you know, you paint the facade that mm. gives on the main road, but the, the other side you never painted or you, you put everything that you don't like on that other balcony because it's, it becomes like your attic. And it's, it's part of our personality. We want to mm. save uh, face. We want to just make believe that everything is great. It's part of it's who Lebanese, we are say, because yeah. we're proud. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but it's part of who we are. It's part of our personality. So it's, it's a bit difficult to just swallow. It's not right either. It's a little hypocritical. Isn't it? It's um, it might be. It's just no. It's it's pride. It's more pride, I think, than anything else. Are you optimistic that dialogue will be started? Yeah, I should of this? be optimistic. Otherwise, I I would mm. stop what mm. I'm doing. I mean, that's what. This is my fuel uh, to be a bit idealistic and optimistic and say, yes, there are things that can be done. I truly believe that we can do things, even though I know the the government is, you know corrupt we know that there's a lot to do but I know that there are some people who are willing to work mm. and not everybody's as numb as we think they are mm. uh, and I'm and I'm betting on that happiness for me is not at the top of the mountain it's really the way to get there and if every day there's a new hope that we're gonna be able to achieve something or work on it or have a target for it um, that's, this is the way to do it for me. I mean, this is what makes me happy. That's and my why you view. do what you do. Some people ask me, didn't you get depressed while you were working on the film? Did you? No, never. I never, never. I'm more depressed now with everything that that's happening. That it's over, you mean? Yes, or? I'm more depressed now that it's over. I'm less happy now. I was happier when I was working on the film. Over 520 hours of rushes. Let me get this right. A six-month shoot with first-time actors. Yes. Some critics calling this movie a documentary. It may be a fiction, as you've stated, but based on real things you've seen. As a director, how was your approach different on this movie than what you've previously done? Uh, the, uh, the approach was completely different from the start. So I, I remember uh, when I used to give out the brief, it, uh, as to how I want this film to be done. I used to say, I want a very small crew, I want to take my time. All the money that we're gonna gather for this film is gonna go on time. That's, that's the most important thing for me. So that's how we decided that, you know, we were gonna produce the film, Khalid was gonna be the producer of the film because we needed that time, we needed that freedom. We, I needed to, never feel like I'm being constrained by time or by anything else. I just wanted my freedom. I wanted to be able to just shoot as much as I want. To just, if something is not working, uh, shoot it all over again. Was there I a never, reason why you wanted this specifically for this movie? Because of the frustrations also that I felt on my other films, because I, I it was, uh, it was, you know, there was time limit, there was a lot of constraints, there was a lot of, so I was never able to really make the films I wanted to make. Of course, they, I mean, they're my babies, I love them, and I was so lucky with the way I did them, and they were my, my first steps in the you know film industry. But this time, I needed to take my time. And, you know, Khaled was able to, to provide me with all that, to just lean on him and be able to just concentrate on what, what I wanted to do. And it's a family affair. It was done here, it's just baby. here. It's another baby. It's, it's another baby, and it's yeah. a family affair. You, you, I still can't believe that we were able to go to Cannes with this film that was that it was born just here. Just, do you, a, I want to, you know, do you consider yourself an activist director? Like, would you ever take on something lighter in the future? What's next for you when you think about I it? I really don't know. I mean, it's always the, 
it's always it has to do with uh, emotions and the state of the moment. Uh, at this moment in time, I feel the need to be talking about this subject, and I could not be I couldn't talk about anything else. That was my obsession. It was my obsession for the moment. So I don't know what what my next obsession is going to be. It might be something lighter. It might be, but it has to be something that you. It comes feel. to you. Does it come yes. to you? Yes, and yeah. it has to be something that you really like feel from inside of you. you that you need, need to say it. That you need to to shout yeah. it out loud. Uh, the, you know, the first time when I st when we started doing the whole research and and the the writing was in parallel with the research i used to go everywhere you know with my co-writers she had hajayli and michelle kasarwene we used to go everywhere in lebanon in the most unfortunate places the most we 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 went to prisons we and incognito and we yeah, used to out, we, yes me, yeah. we we used to find ways to go there without anybody noticing and knowing who we are so once I came, I was coming back from um, one of, you know, angry, one of those visits, I came back angry because I had seen so many kids, you know, so many kids in, in very difficult situations, very... So I, I never, I never draw usually, I never, but I started drawing and I started drawing the face of a child who is shouting at adults, you know, his face, with his mouth wide open, he's shouting out loud at adults. And I don't know why I drew this. It's something that was I needed. I felt the need to do this. I felt the need to draw. And then now when I see it, four years later, and I compare it, it's, it was Zane. When I see that, and I hadn't met Zane. I didn't know who Zane. But there was a Zane. But there was a Zane. And yeah. that's why to come back to that obsession, you know, sometimes you need to, it's, some, it's something that is within you, you don't know why you but do it. But you need it. to put it out. But then, but then the pieces of the puzzle come together. That's why I, wrote, I, I drew this, this, because I wanted to... Um, it needs to speak to you. Yeah, and I wanted to express that, that voice, that this child's cry for help, and then this child's cry for help became this court where he's going to come and sue his parents and say, I'm going to sue my parents because they gave me life, because they gave me life without, without giving me anything in this life, without giving me my simplest basic rights, mm. uh, the right to be loved, the right to be nurtured, the right. And, and by suing his parents, he's suing the whole system. What's it like working with your husband? You always see couples working together, either works or it doesn't. Obviously it works here and he's had some very nice things to say about being a producer and giving you that freedom. What's it like working with him? It's at the same time very fulfilling because like I told you, I, I, we, we understand each other, we don't need to talk. We don't need to talk to be able to do the things we're doing. But sometimes it's difficult because you know when you're when you're sharing ideas, when you're talking about the music, of course there are moments where you don't agree, there are moments where you have to make a few concessions, where, but you know, overall, I, I don't imagine me being me without him next to me. Yeah. You had just because, given birth before this, yes. and motherhood, I know, because it's, it's also one of the themes in Kafanaum. how did it affect your approach, being a mother and having to see do you see children differently? I, I used to see my kids in Zayn and Jonas. Your experience as a, as a mother gives you that know-how, I think, yeah. in working with kids, in working with children. You know, the smallest details of, you know, the, everything that has to do with nursing and breastfeeding in the film and, and what Rahil was going through, because I was actually going through the same thing. I was actually breastfeeding my daughter. You know, you think about Lebanese cinema and it's had a pretty good year yes. culminating with you, of course, it at the great, at, at Cannes. What can you say about the Lebanese talent that we have, which is now taking flight? I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic because uh, Lebanese cinema is now on the map. Mm. Uh, it's never been that much on the map. Uh, and I think there's a lot of very interesting stories to be told. And you feel like any filmmaker that's coming from this part of the world, when you watch a film, it's not any film. You know that every film is done with everything they have. Like it's a war every time you want to, every time you, you make a film here, it's your blood and your sweat and your heart and your soul when you make it because it's not easy to make a film. And this it's is something raw. that it's, it's raw. raw. It yeah, not, yeah, not everything, but, but 
you feel like there's a, there's a lot to say. It's not just another film coming from this part of the world. I'm not only talking about Lebanese films, but uh, you know, films from the Middle East in general. Thank you. Thank you. I want a picture. How was that for you? It was great. If you like this episode of Y Chats and want to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click, click, click.